So if you're creating a first person game, one thing you definitely need is solid and scalable movement. Now in the background you can see a clip of a character controller I made that contains a lot of functionality. Obviously I can't cover all of that in just one video, so for today I'm just going to focus on the base movement and then you can either just take that and be done or build on top of it. So let's start off by creating the camera controller. This is really simple. Basically, we just need to code that if we move our mouse along the x-axis, the camera and the player should rotate horizontally. And if we move our mouse along the y-axis, the camera should rotate vertically. So open up a new script and we're going to start by creating two floats for the x and y sensitivity, a transform for the player's orientation and two other floats for the x and y rotation of your camera. Now before we implement the rotation, let's just open void start and make sure that the cursor is locked in the middle of the screen and also invisible. In void update, we can now get the mouse x input by using input.getAxisRaw mouse x and we're going to multiply that by time.delta time and our x sensitivity. And you can repeat the same thing for the mouse y input. Next, you just add the x input to your y rotation and then subtract the y input from your x rotation. Now I'll be honest, this sounds a little bit confusing if you hear it for the first time, but this is just the way Unity handles rotations and inputs. So this is the correct way to do it. Now you want to make sure that you can't look up or down more than 90 degrees. And to achieve this, you just clamp your x rotation from minus 90 to 90. And now in Unity, if you want to apply any rotations, you normally just use quaternion.euler and pass in your values. In this case, you want to do it once to rotate your camera along both axes and then a second time to rotate your player along the y axis. Now back in Unity, let me quickly show you my player setup. Here I have the player with a rigid body on it and make sure it's set to continuous and interpolate. Then as a child I have the player object, which is really just a blue capsule. Then the orientation, which as mentioned before is just an empty game object that keeps track of the direction you're facing. And now for the camera setup. I chose to put the camera into a separate camera holder, because having a camera on a rigid body object can be a bit buggy. In order for this to work, you just need this camera position object inside the player, drag it up a bit, and then on the camera holder, you can add this really simple script to make the camera always move with your player. And of course, don't forget to assign the player cam script you just created to the actual camera and set the values to something like this. And if you now hit play, you should be able to look around as you like. And now that's out of the way, we can finally start with coding the movement. So open up a new script and start by creating a float for your movement speed and a transform for your orientation. You'll also need two floats for your horizontal and vertical keyboard inputs, a vector free for your movement direction and a reference to your rigid body. Now in void start, you just want to assign this rigid body as well as freeze its rotation. Next, you can create an input function similar to how you did in the camera script, but this time for the keyboard inputs. Don't forget to call this input function in void update, and now you're ready to create the move player function. In there you want to calculate your movement direction by creating a new vector free and setting it equal to orientation.forward times your vertical input plus orientation.right times your horizontal input. This way you'll always walk in the direction you're looking. Now to actually add force to your player, you can use rigidbody.addForce in the direction you just calculated times your move speed times 10, just to make it a bit faster and you want to use force mode.force. Also, don't forget to call the move player function in fixed update. If you now assign the script, set up the variables and hit play, you're able to add force into all directions, but it's super slippery and you accelerate without end. 
So if you want to make a game about the fastest penguin in the world sliding over ice, then there you go. But in any other case, I would highly suggest you to apply drag to the player's rigid body, which will make the movement less slippery, and then limit the player's velocity to his movement speed. So head back to your script, and first we need to check if the player is on the ground, and only then we want to apply drag. Because having drag while being in the air just feels super weird. So create a new float for your player's height, a layer mask for what is ground, and a bool called grounded. Now to perform the ground check, you want to shoot a ray cast from your current position down and see if it hits something. The length of this ray will be half of your player's height, plus a bit more. So go back to void update and perform this ground check. And to finally apply the drag, you can just say if grounded rigidbody.drag equals ground drag and if not grounded, it should be zero. Now back in Unity, create a new layer mask called what is ground and apply it to the ground. Set the values of your script and hit play again. Now as you can see, everything feels a lot better, but there's still one problem. We're reaching a speed of over 10, even though it should only be 7. So as mentioned before, you want to limit the player's speed manually by making a new function called speed control. In there you first want to get the flat velocity of your rigid body, which is just the x and z axis. And if this velocity is greater than your movement speed, you want to create a new vector free, set it equal to your normalized flat velocity times your movement speed and then apply this limited velocity again to your rigid body. So basically, if you go faster than your movement speed, you calculate what your max velocity would be and then apply it. And don't forget to call this function in void update. Now if you hit play again, you can see that you're always moving at the exact same max speed, which is of course what you want. So on to the next segment. Now it's time for jumping and air control. Since we already implemented the ground check, this is pretty straightforward. You just need a few new floats like jump force, jump cooldown and air multiplier. As well as a bool to check if you're ready to jump. Now create a new function called jump and before you apply any forces, you want to make sure that your y velocity is set to zero. This way you will always jump the exact same height. After that, you can apply the force with rigidbody.addForce in the upward direction multiplied with your jump force. And this time use force mode.impulse because you're only applying the force once. Also create a reset jump function just to set ready to jump to true again. Next you want to choose a key for your jump key. And then in my input, you can check if this jump key is pressed, you're ready to jump and you're grounded. If this is all true, you can call your jump function. And also, you want to set ready to jump to false, as well as invoke the reset jump function using your jump cooldown as delay. This way, you will be able to continuously jump if you hold down the jump key, which is something a lot of beginner movement scripts lack. And as mentioned before, we also want to change the air control a bit. So inside of your move player function, you want to add these if statements and if you're in the air, multiply your move speed with the air multiplier. Back in Unity, you can set the new values to something like this and give it a try. Now you're able to jump if you hit space and if you hold space down, you jump continuously. Also, the movement in the air is now a lot more reasonable. And with that, you just finished a fully working character movement script. As always, if you have trouble setting it up, in the description you'll find a link to my Discord server and on there you can download the entire project file totally for free. And of course, there's still a lot more you could add on top of this. For example, next week I'll upload a tutorial on sprinting, slope movement and crouching. But for now, thank you so much for watching. If the tutorial has helped you in any way, please like the video in return and make sure to subscribe for more awesome tutorials. See you next time and best of luck with the game you're working on.